It is a blessing to be here this morning. And it, I count it a privilege to be able to speak before you guys today. And I thank Pastor and um, as he shepherds this house. And I thank, um, in her absence, Pastor Anderson as well. And I give you guys honor. You know, I, um, as I began to sit down to, um, and I was thinking about Mother's Day, and um, pastors definitely in consecration gave honor to all the mothers, and he left no one out. Um, I really tried to to, to to ask God for something traditional for Mother's Day. And that's not what he gave me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, so with that being said, I do want to honor the mothers. I do want you to know that you're appreciated. I do know that as a mother, that it's a glorious and sometimes thankless job. But I will say this is that we are, we, we're here because of our mothers. Amen. We are here, walking here because of our mothers. And, and I just want to do, you know, my due diligence and give honor to every mother that's here. Amen. My Bible reading today is going to come from Colossians 2, 6 and 7. And now, just if you have accepted Jesus Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. God is so good, y'all. God is good. He really is good. Today, um, what I'm going to speak about is spiritual development. The ideal relationship that we have with our parents is a reflection of our Holy Father. Many of us only have the example of our mothers not to discount fathers, but mothers have a powerful impact on our lives. Whether they're still with us or they've already gone home to meet the Lord, we have some great thing we can say that they've imparted to us. Each of us have faced some challenges with our mother, but she has definitely helped to shape who we are today. As we grow, there are certain developmental stages that we must progress through. How we progress determines our developmental health, physically and mentally. An ego psychologist named Eric Erickson developed a popular theory called Erickson's Stage of Psychological Development. The idea is that each stage needed to be positively reinforced to move to the next healthy stage. There are also stages of spiritual development. The first stage of spiritual development is trust. There is a foundation that is laid for us from a very young age. There are two things that are thoroughly mixed together, and that's faith and trust. We develop faith as infants because we believe that our mother is going to meet our needs, and when she does, that builds trust. When faith and trust is established, we begin to understand what it means to be loved. How much more can we have faith that God loves us and is present to meet our needs? It is faith that lifts the heavy, that lifts the heavy burden of despair and gives hope that we can trust in. We can trust in the breath of life we breathe every day. I want y'all to take a deep breath. And when that earthly breath is no longer, we can trust in his promise is just as real as that breath that he gives us daily. Amen. The second stage is confidence. Romans 15 and 13. 
I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Theoretically, the second stage is when one is confident to make their own decisions and develops preferences because they have gotten positive feedback in the first stage. Spiritually speaking, this stage is not confidence in self, but in the relationship you have with God. This is the stage where you make that true connection with God. You begin to build a personal relationship with him, and it's called confidence. Yes. See, many times people who don't have that, that confidence because they think that they don't have access to God. They think that they're ill-equipped because they have made some shortcoming or they've done something wrong so they can't get to God for themselves. So they always are asking, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Not saying that they don't need prayer, you know, need prayer, but that they feel like they can't do it for themselves. Instead of always needing other people to pray for you, you can begin to reach the throne room and pray for yourself. Romans 3 and 8 and 39, Romans 8 and 39 says, nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. You must understand that you have a personal door to the creator. You have a private line. When you have confidence, you'll begin to use it. When a baby knows they have the means to get what they want, <laughs> they use it. And a good mother responds. In the same way, you can call on God and he will answer your prayers. The third stage is initiative. According to Erickson, initiative is about social interaction. But truly, the third stage of spiritual development is becoming a witness. Let me say this. When you get connected with God and he begins to do a work in you, you're going to want to tell somebody. Sanctification is a process. But these first three stages are early in the developmental process. Do you remember when God lifted you out of the ditch of distress? Do you remember what he did for you? Do you remember when you had a desire to change? That will make you want to tell somebody. This stage is so important because it's God's commandment to us to go and share the good news. Share your story. What has God done for you? What is, your, what is the good news concerning the Lord? What is your good news concerning the Lord? How many people have you shared it with? When Paul was changed on the road to Damascus, he began to preach about it. Well, you may say Paul was called a God. So are you. We are all called to share our testimony of the good news with Jesus Christ. The fourth stage is competence. Competence is a sense of feeling capable and knowledgeable about what you're doing. Someone might ask, well, shouldn't competence come before initiative? Well, you see, initiative operates on grace. But competence operates on intention. I remember when I first started witnessing, we called it, we called it soul winning, and it was an adrenaline high. And I was out telling people about God, and, and people were receiving, this, receiving the testimony, and, and people were getting saved and, and things of that nature. But then I ran into somebody who started quoting scriptures to me. And the doctrine that they were telling me didn't seem quite right. But I, didn't, I had read my Bible, but I didn't know my Bible well enough to really speak to the conversation. That was the day I decided that I would become competent in the word of God. Second Timothy 2 and 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a worker that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to be intentional to gain competence. When you feed on the word of God, it not only gives you competence, it gives you strength, guidance, wisdom, and even companionship. You learn that God is for you. And when he is for you, he is more than anything that can be against you. Now, the fifth stage, y'all, is identity. 
is identity. Hmm. Would you say he knows my name? Yes. Understanding who you are is very important. When you have trust, confidence, initiative, and competence, you get a true grasp on who you are and your godly purpose. Identity is power. When you know who you are in God, there is nothing that can come against you. In Acts, the seven sons of Sceva came against the demonic spirits in the name of Paul's God. They said, Jesus we know. Paul we know. But who are you? And and, and they didn't win that fight. When you know who you are in God, demons will have to flee. Because you have authority from on high. When you know who you are in God, you don't get discouraged when things don't go your way. You know it's not out of anger or malice or disgruntledness from God. It's just a process building you up. You don't lose hope when people come against you. When you find yourself on your back, you'll, be, you'll just be still and know that God is working it out for your good. You let tribulation work patience and allow patience to have her perfect work, which brings experience and hope. And it's not the end of the world. It's just an experience. It's just, one, it's just a step closer to wherever God is trying to get you. You got to go through something to get somewhere. I heard a song the other day, and in the bridge it said, God's not worried, so why do I worry? When I tell you that I know that he has a cattle on a thousand hills and he, he knows what I need because I'm his child. That's who I am. And as I was getting, as I was preparing for this message and I, the, this, particular, this particular point, this particular stage is where I, I, I was at. And I had to keep telling myself as I was going through my anxiety and like, oh God, how am I going to do this? And I was like, Know who you are. Amen. Know who you are in God. Do you know who you are this morning? Amen. The sixth stage is intimacy. Mm-hmm. How is your alone time with God? Amen. Pastor's been preaching about the importance of a quiet time for I don't know how long. Amen. It is important because it's a part of your spiritual development. Psalm says, blessed is the one who delights in the word and meditates on it day and night. When you talk with God, you learn his personality. Did you know that God had a personality? Yes. You will know when it's him and when it's not him. John 10, 27 says, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. Amen. If you're not having a quiet time, who are you following? The seventh stage is generativity. Generativity is the propensity and willingness to engage in acts that promote the well-being of younger generations. Is God calling you to do something more than what you're doing right now? Is there a work that has been burning in your heart that you're trying to shake but you can't? Is it time for you to open up and pour into others in a position of mentoring? What is God speaking to your heart? He wants to do something far beyond what you've experienced before. This is when he meets with you in your quiet time and pours into you what you're supposed to be doing. God is saying that some of you have assignments that he's giving you. What are you waiting for? Because he's waiting on you. What stage are you in today? Are you struggling with trust? Do you want the burden to be lifted? He can do that for you today. If you find yourself in a place and you are stagnating, maybe it's because you need to go back and reestablish the stage before. If If you are struggling with telling people about the good news, begin to ask God for that confidence to move forward and take a leap of faith. If you are having a hard time weathering the storm, Maybe it's because you're still unsure about who you are. 
Get in the word and fill up on that strength and love and knowing that he is not going to leave you hanging. If you are running from the call of God, that God has ordained on you, maybe you just need to remember who you are. I'm, I, I just want to, you know, take a moment for you guys, for, for everyone to have a self-evaluation and self-reflection today about these stages, the stages that God has for us to go through. Because each stage, each place is purposeful. Each stage is meant for a reason so that we can be able to have a closer walk with him. What are you needing tonight, this morning? What are you needing this morning? What is it that you need? What stage are you in? Think about that for a moment. And if you're at a stage where you're feeling stuck, if you feel stuck, then let's go back. Let's go back. Because you don't want to, you don't want to, miss where you're supposed to be. We see, because God has a plan for you. And his callings are sure. See, the very end is integrity. And that's when you get, to, that's at the very end when you get to that place when God says, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. And you want to have been able to progress to that place where you know that you've done what you've, what you've needed to do. The assignments that he's given you, the purpose that he's placed in you. You don't want to lose that. You don't want to lose that. So ask yourself, where are you this morning? If you're struggling and you need if you're at the, you know, bare bottom and you just need trust, if you just need to, to, to have that trust in your life and you're feeling lacking, if you've never, ever asked Jesus Christ into your life before, then I want to ask you to come up so that someone can pray for you. If you are struggling with, with confidence and you are at a place where you just don't know that confidence and you... You're really not able to to grasp that place. Then come up so we can pray. If you're struggling with initiative and you really want to be able to reach somebody for God, but you don't know how, you feel a fear in your heart or your spirit, come up so we can pray for you. If you're struggling with that competence because you want to get in your word and and you're having a hard time retaining it or you're having a hard time being able to understand the word as you begin to read it we can pray for you for that as well if you're struggling because you don't know who you are you just don't know you're still trying to find yourself you know you trust in God you know, you know how to pray. You even talk to people about God. But when the storms really hit, when things really get hard, you crumble. Man, come on up. Come on up. And I tell you what, if you are struggling, with your quiet time. And I I know that I have struggled with my quiet time. Then come on up. There's definitely room for prayer for each person. If you know that there's a call on your life and you just haven't stepped into it, you got your feet in the mud. And somebody's having to drag you, it feels like. You're having to drag yourself. Man, God wants so much for you. There's so much that he wants for you. 
just come up and be prepared that God is going to open up doors that you can't even imagine need to be open for you. And I just want to extend it to anyone also that um, doesn't that doesn't have a church home that wants to make good success their church home. If you want to come up as well, if it's your first time, Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord God, right now, Lord God, for all of these, all of your children, Lord God, that have come, Lord God, unto you, Lord. And I'm asking, Lord God, that you would just make a way, Lord God. Lord God, that you would lift the burden, Lord God, with faith, Lord God, and love, Lord God, that they would just, Lord God, invite you into their heart, Lord. Lord God, for those, Lord God, that are struggling, Lord God, with that confidence, that confidence, Lord God, that you would just begin to lift those burdens, Lord God, and just know that they have a connection with you, Lord. Show yourself real to him, Lord God. Lord God, for those, Lord God, that are struggling, Lord God, with identity, Lord God, and intimacy, Lord God, with you, Lord God. Let them know, Lord God, that you, Lord God, are so powerful. You are so wonderful, Lord God, and they belong to you, Lord. Encamp your angels around them, Lord God. Build a hedge, Lord God. Lift up a standard, Lord God. Beat back the enemy that would try to lie to them, Lord God, and tell them that they're not of you, Lord God, that they're not valuable because they belong to you. They are royalty. Lord God, and I I pray, Lord God, for those who you're calling, Lord God, that hear you, Lord God, but have turned a blind, a deaf ear. Lord God, open their ears, Lord God. Open their hearts to receive, Lord God, that call, Lord God. Let them not lay it down, Lord God. Let them not take it lightly, Lord God. But, Lord God, I ask that you would gird them up, Lord God, in strength, Lord God. Lord God, reaffirm them, Lord God, with what it is that you have for them, Lord. Lord God, let it not be comfortable for them to walk away, Lord. Because you, Lord God, you are everything. And without you, Lord God, we're nothing. So we have to walk in what you would have us to do because there's no peace outside of that. Lord God, I thank you right now, Lord God, for everyone that's come up. Lord God, I ask that you would honor each and one of their prayers, Lord God, each one of their requests, Lord God. And we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory, Lord God. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God.